So today I want to talk about the strong convergence for tensor GOE random matrix. And this topic is, uh, is in the field of random matrix theory and free probability. And the project is a joint work with Bunau Collins from Kyoto University. Okay, these are the outline of my talk where I will, uh, uh, in order to define my model, I need to introduce a special tensor uh, notations. And I will briefly int introduce the free probability and then talk about our results. I will uh, mainly discuss uh, the key steps of the proof to establish the strong convergence, and also I will uh, provide some reference. Okay, let's start with the uh, special notation of tensor. So let uh, m and n to be integers, and we consider uh, h to be a n-dimensional vector space, and we consider h tensor m times. In some sense, we can view the elements in H tensor with M times as a multi, uh, a multi area, but we can also view it as a vector space. Next, uh, for we choose uh, any permutation sigma on this M. Uh, this M means that uh, it, is, it, it is a set of integers. Oh, it is a set of integers from one to M, and we consider the linear transformation, the linear transformation A sigma divided in, the, in this way. So A sigma add on the base of the tensor space, that's x1, tensor x2, tensor until xm, is the x of sigma 1. That's we only, the permutation sigma only adds on the subscript. And it is easy to check that A sigma is actually a unitary transformation. Next, uh, we divide another uh, linear transformation x. Uh, on, on we, we divide another linear transformation on the space of linear transformation. That's to say, if we have an input x, which is a linear transformation on uh, h tensor m times to itself, we divide L sigma uh, such that the output of L sigma x is to, is to multiple an A sigma on the left and multiple an A sigma inverse on the right. Now uh, we can, uh, uh, in order to understand this notation well, uh, let's consider uh, an example of a uh, uh, a simple uh, transformation x. So suppose that x is of this form, x1 tensor with x2 tensor until xm, where xi's are the linear transformation on cn. That's it is a linear transformation on each copy of the tensor space. And then for any uh, x1, x2 to xm, which are n-dimensional complex vectors, the L sigma of x add on the tensor of x1 to xm, by the definition, we first we add the a sigma inverse to this uh, tens tensor of vectors. What we have is a sigma x on the vector, which is x of sigma inverse 1, tensor with x of sigma inverse 2, until the last one, x of sigma inverse of m. And then we, uh, since x has the tensor form, so we can um, add, the, add each tensor component of x to the vector. What we obtain is still a vector x1 of x sigma inverse 1 for the first uh, tensor component. And until the last one, which is xm, add on the last vector, x of sigma inverse of m. And the last step is to uh, use, again, the definition to compute the, a, the, com compute the a sigma of this vector, which is just to permute the subscript. So what we obtain is x of sigma 1 add on the x1 until the last one. Since x1 to xm are arbitrary, so this formula implies that the a sigma times uh, x times the a sigma inverse is actually to permute the uh, tensor component of x according to the permutation sigma. That's we have x of sigma 1 tensor until the x of sigma m. Okay, from linear algebra, actually what we know is that if we fix a base x, a E1 to En of the vector space, then the vectors in the vector space H is actually equivalent to a vectors in Cn. That's, uh, we just uh, represent the vector as the linear combination of the basis. And then the coefficient of in the linear combination is, can form a vector in Cn. And similarly, if we have a vectors on the H tensor m, the space of H tensor m times, then, it, then this vector is actually equivalent to a vector in Cn tensor m times. 
And the linear transformation is actually equivalent to a matrix and it is similar in the tensor space. If we have a linear transformation on the H tensor, tensor M times, then this linear transformation is uh, equivalent to a matrix. That's the, the M by M matrix with, te with tensor M times. And it is equivalent to a, a matrix with a larger dimension. That's the dimension you become N to the power M. So although the definition of both, we, we divide it L sigma for the linear transformation, but actually it is equivalent to for the matrices. Okay. Okay, next, uh, let's turn to our new notation for tensor. That's, uh, we still think uh, for M and N to be integer. And we let J to be a set of numbers, which is A1, A2 to A. Here I use the absolute value of J for the, for the size of the set. And, and here it is a sub, uh, we choose J to be a subset of M. And, uh, and the elements in J actually uh, is under a certain order. Now uh, for X, which is a uh, matrix with dimension N to the power absolute value of J, and Y, which is a matrix whose dimension is N to the power M minus the absolute value of J, it is known that X tensor with Y would be an element belongs to uh, M and C, the N, N times N, uh, the space of M times N matrices, and then tensor with M times. Now we choose a sigma, which is a permutation on the integer, uh, on the set of integers from 1 to M, such that the sigma J equals to AJ. And for the rest, uh, we don't care, but we should fix the permutation. And I divided the x uh, here, the tensor tilde of j of y, is the L sigma of x tensor y, where L sigma is divided in the previous uh, slides. So here is a connection between the new notation, the, tens the, the tensor tilde with the original tensor. That's if we choose uh, j to to be one, two until the cut, uh, the absolute value of j, and we choose sigma to be an identity. And in this case, the operator, the tensor tilter, becomes the usual tensor operator. Okay, next, uh, let's turn to our model. So let uh, n, m, and k be positive integers. And for i be between 1 to k, I choose ji to be an order subset of uh, integers uh, in, of, the subs of, of the set of integers from 1 to m. And here uh, I require uh, the size of each ji is, uh, is larger than m over 2. And I, I define the parameter alpha to be the minimum of 2 times uh, the, ca the cardinal of ji minus m. So by this, uh, by this condition, the alpha should be at least one, since everything is uh, is integer. Now I define the xji to be a GOE matrix of dimension n to the power uh, absolute value of ji. Uh, here is a small remark: is that uh, I don't I don't require the ji to be different. But in case that, for example, if j1 equals to j2 the matrix xj1 and xj2 still be viewed as different GOEs. Okay, now uh, for deterministic matrix bi, uh, which is uh, self-adjoint and the dimension is d, we consider the, the following model. That's xn is the sum of uh, bi tensor with a uh, big matrix. The big matrix is xji, which is a GOE, and then the tensor tilde of ji with the identity. And the size of identity is to fill the whole matrix to such that the dimension is n to the power m. So this, so this object is an element of the d-dimensional uh, complex matrix space tensor with the n-dimensional complex matrix space with tensor with m times. Now uh, for S1, S2 to SK, which is a family of three semicircular elements, I define the X3 to be the sum of BI tensor with SI. And our goal in the project is to compare the spectrum of XN, that's the XN given in this formula, with the X3. That's uh, I replace the, 
big matrix in the bracket by the semicircular elements. I want to compare the spectrum of these two. Okay, now uh, next, uh, let me briefly recall some uh, terminology in free probability. The first one is the so-called star, prob star probability space. So suppose we have a unital uh, associated star algebra A, which is over the complex field, and tau is a star linear functional, which, sati which satisfies that it met one the unit in the algebra to the to one, and then it is uh, and, and then the tau of AB equals tau of BA for every A and B in the algebra. And uh, positivity property that tau of A star A is non negative. And we say that tau is faithful if tau of A star A equals zero implies that A is zero. Now, a C star probability space is, is the following. So we still have a, a unital associated star algebra and a tau which is a which is a star linear uh, functional and it is no, sometimes known as a trace. And besides, the space is equipped with a uh, norm. The norm is a, is a function which maps elements in A to a non-negative uh, real number. And it satisfies the two, uh, two conditions. The first one is that the norm of the product is less or equals to the product of the norms. And, and the second one is that the norm of A star A is the same as the square of the norm of A for every A and B in the uh, algebra. Oh, here is a property related to the trace and the norm. So, so the absolute value of the trace is always smaller or equals to the norm if, if the space is a C star probability space. And moreover, if the trace is faithful, then the norm can, can be represented as a, uh, in, in the sense of the trace by the following. We take the trace of A star A to the power n, and after compute the trace, we take the power of 1 over 2n, and we set n tends to infinity. This will give the, the norm. A small example for, the, for, for this terminology is, is about the matrix space, where, uh, where we, in the where for matrix we can choose A to be the set of all n by n Hermitian matrix. And we choose the norm to be the operator norm. That's the largest eigenvalue. And the trace here is to, is, is to be the normalized trace. That's the trace is the sum of the diagonal entries and we divide it by the dimension. Uh, here the normalized is because we require the tau one equals to one. And the one in the algebra here is, should be the identity matrix. So we should have a normalized normalized constant one over the dimension. And in probability, in some sense, we may choose the tau to be one over n times the expectation of the trace. That's the expectation of the normalized trace. Okay, let, let's go to the next uh, important terminology, which is the, about the convergency. And the first one is the weak convergency. Now I suppose uh, I have a sequence of uh, non-commutative star probability space a n and tau n, and, I and a and tau is another non-commutative star probability space. Now suppose I have an, uh, a collection of uh, elements b, b, which is b1, b2 to bs, they are elements in a. And bn, which is uh, bm, consists of bm1, bn2 to bns, and they are the elements in a n. Now we say that the sequence Bn converts weakly to B if for any non-commutative polynomial P, the P of Bn, we take the trace in the corresponding space, so it should be trace n, and we set n tends to infinity. If this limit is exactly the tau, the, that's the trace of P at on B. Here the, the, the P is the same P on the left-hand side. And if this condition is satisfied, we say that the sequence converts weakly to uh, the sequence Bn converts weakly to B. Now here is uh, some uh, small re relationship between the, this uh, definition with the t some terminologies in random matrix. So if we still choose An to be the set of uh, n-dimensional matrix, and tau n is the normalized trace, and for, uh, for simplicity, I choose S to be 1. That's we only consider one element. 
and I denoted lambda 1 to lambda n be the set of eigenvalues of the n by n matrix Bn. And in this case, the tau n of P of Bn is actually the, the average of the P add on the eigenvalues of Bn. And for this object, uh, we can write uh, in, in the form of integer. Integer, integral. That's the integral of px, a function, and it against the measure. This measure is the 1 over n sub, summation j from 1 to n, the Dirac delta measure at the eigenvalue lambda j dx. So this is a probability measure. That's the whole space has a uh, measure 1. So this is the connection between the, this uh, definition with the random matrix. Okay, next. Let's turn to the other kind of uh, convergency, which is sometimes known as the strong convergency. So suppose that the space, uh, the C star for BT space, that's besides the algebra and the trace, we will have a norm. And if the sequence converge weakly to B, and in addition, we have one more uh, condition, that's the, co the convergency of the norm of P of Bn is the norm of P of B. And in this way, the sequence, we say that the sequence converge strongly to B. Again, we can, uh, we can use the, uh, the terminology in matrices to understand this definition. So sub I still choose AN to be the n-dimensional, uh, the space of n-dimensional matrices. And tau n is the normalized trace. And the, here, the, op the norm here is still the operator norm. And if I denote it mu1, mu2 to mu n to be the set of singular values of n by n matrix P, B, n. That is to say the square of the singular value is actually the, eigen, the set of eigenvalues of P, B, n times P, B, n star. And in this case, the operator norm of the P, B, n is actually the maximum of the singular uh, values of the ma corresponding matrix. So in some sense, the weak convergence reveals the, uh, reveals the average property of the eigenvalues, while the, here the operator norm reveals the top eigenvalues for the matrix. OK, next, uh, let's uh, go to the definition of the semicircular element. So I suppose A tau to be a star probability space. And element S, if it is uh, self-adjoint, and if it is moment satisfied this formula, that's the odd moment is zero. And the even moment are given by the following. So the, uh, if the power is k is 2m, then the even moment is 1 over m plus 1 times uh, the, here is a combinatorial number. We choose uh, m from the 2m. Two, two and, and then the last element is said to be the same circular element. So with the help, uh, by some simple calculation, actually the moment of the semicircle element can be written in this form, where the tau of sk is 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus 2 to 2, t to the power k, and the square root of uh, 4 minus t squared dt. So this is actually the, uh, in probability, we can view this one as a probability density. That's the integral of the polynomial against the density. And if you draw the graph of this density, it, it is just a semicircle. So this is the name of the semicircular element. OK, next, uh, let's turn to the another important example, which is known as the GUE matrix. And I think the GUE matrix has been divided this morning. <coughs> Uh, let me uh, briefly go through the definition. So for GUE matrix, it is a Hermitian n by n matrix. And here, uh, which is normalized by a 1 over square root of dimension factor. And without this normalization, the entries of x is actually the IID, uh, IID standard Gaussian. On the diagonal, it is real. And on the off diagonal, it is complex. And uh, uh, they are independent up to the Hermitian structures. Okay, using the GUE, actually it is well known that uh, if we have independent n by n GUEs, and then the sequence actually converge strongly to the, to the, uh, to the family of free uh, semicircular elements.
Okay, next. Uh, next, uh, let's turn, uh, let me uh, rephrase the example uh, in the last slide. So suppose, uh, let's consider a sim simpler case. So suppose we have x, y, which are independent and dimensional GUE matrix. Then we will have the strong convergence of the family x and y to uh, free, uh, a family of three semicircular elements, S1 and S2. And here, uh, X and Y are matrix, so they are not uh, commutes. That's X times Y is different from Y times X. And another case in the, in the literature is, is sometimes uh, referred to the partially com com commutes case. That's suppose we have two uh, independent and dimensional GUEs, X and Y. And if we consider the convergence of x tensor with identity of dimension d and identity of dimension d tensor with y, we study the com a convergence of this object for d sm smaller than n. Then uh, uh, actually, this work has been uh, explored by a lot of uh, uh, a lot of mathematicians. And the last case is the uh, commutative case, which uh, which says that if we still have two n-dimensional GUEs. And if here the identity, the, di that the dimension of the identity d is exactly equals to n, then, we, then the object we consider should be x tensor with identity and identity tensor with y. And they converge strongly to S1 tensor with i, uh, S1 tensor with an I the identity in the algebra, and also identity tensor with S2. And this result is due to the Billings tree and Capitani. And here, uh, for this model, if we consider, uh, con we, if we focus on these two objects, actually they commute. That's x tensor with identity times the identity tensor with y. It gives x tensor with y, and it is the same as the identity tensor with y times the x tensor with identity. So these two are actually commutes. And actually, in our model, uh, in our case, it is more or less uh, uh, sim in, for in this case the partial com commutative. However, we allow the legs to be uh, permuse. Okay, let's turn to the next slide where we briefly uh, talk about our motivation. So, so uh, actually, the, at the very beginning, what we are want to study is the spectrum of the matrix Y given in this form. It is the sum of the matrices XI. And here, XI is actually a kind of uh, GOE. So we choose X to be a random matrix acting on the uh, on, on the n square dimensional matrices. And XI is uh, just a version of X. And acting on the legs I and I plus one of this uh, matrix, the n, uh, n to the power K plus one dimensional matrix. And in our project, we choose the X to be a GOE. And we, what we do is a more general that the xi need not to be the lack of two uh, consecutive number i and i plus one. And they can be arbitrary. Okay, next, uh, let's turn to our results. So here I introduce a small notation, this iota, which is a mapping that maps a matrix to the column vector of its entries. Uh, if we have an n by n matrix, then iota of this matrix is actually a, a long column vector of dimension n square. And the, vec the, entry, the component of the vector is just the entries of the matrix. Now the first result is, is that uh, suppose we have two parameters, uh, the gamma and theta, which may depend on the dimension, such that uh, the, B, the, the, the operator norm of the sum of the square of the coefficient matrix bi is controlled by gamma, and the sum of the operator norm of the iota bi times iota bi star is controlled by the theta. And under this assumption, we will have the following uh, estimate on the probability of the spectrum of xn and x3. That's the spectrum of xn is included in the spectrum of x3 plus some, something. Here is the something here is the some uh, universal constant times the n to the power minus alpha over 4 times the gamma to the power 104, and theta to the power 104. And here, we, uh, we need to multiply the log of uh, 3 over 4 of the dimension, d times n to the power n plus t, and then times the interval minus 1 to 1. And this probability is very large. It is at least 1 minus e to the power minus t squared. And besides, we also have the relationship between the operator norm of xn and x3. 
in, the, in this way. The probability of the norm operator norm of xn is larger than the operator norm of x3 plus something. The, he, this one is actually the same as uh, this quantity. And this probability is very small. It is smaller equals to e to the power minus t squared for, for universal uh, positive constant c. Sorry? Uh, bi, bi is a coefficient matrix that uh, we have bi tensor with the xji tensor of identity. Maybe I briefly go back to the definition of the model to show you again. Yes, uh, the, the bi is this coefficient matrix. Okay. And uh, let me make a uh, brief remark is that our result is, uh, is, is an application of a paper by Rehandos and, hi and his co-authors. And I will show you his paper uh, in the reference. Okay, um, okay. now a small coro is that if we choose T to be this object, we can simplify the formula. That's the spectrum of Xn is including the spectrum of X3 plus this quantity. Uh, this, this event happens with a very high probability. The probability is at least 1 minus e to the power minus uh, log of 3 over 2 of the dimension, d times n to the power m. And also, uh, the similarly for the operator norm. So operator norm of xn larger than the operator norm of x3 plus this object, this, this event has a probability which is, which is very small. It is smaller than e to the power minus log of 3 over 2 d n to the power m. And this object is actually summable with respect to n. So in some setting, we can, we, we can uh, use the borel candley lemma to, to deduce some almost true convergence. OK. This is the next uh, corollary for our result. That's, uh, we're still under the same assumption as the theorem. And we, if we assume, assume that this object, uh, n to the power minus alpha times the gamma theta times the log of to the power three of d n to the power m, this object converts to zero. Then for any epsilon positive, we have the almost sure uh, relationship eventually when n tends to infinity. That's the spectrum of x n is including the spectrum of x three plus a uh, small uh, interval. And also the operator norm of x n is controlled by the operator norm of x three with a loss of an, uh, an arbitrary small number. OK, now if we fix the, the parameter related to the b's, that's the we fix b1 to bk and also fix the number of the matrix k and fix the dimension of the matrix b1, that's we fix d. Then uh, under the assumption that n to the power minus alpha times m to the power 3 times log to the power 3 of n, uh, this object converts to 0 when n tends to infinity, then we will have the uh, the following convergence. That's for any non-commutative polynomial P, the, the polynomial on the, the Gaussian matrix that's xj1 tensor tutor with the identity until the xjk tensor tutor with the identity. Uh, this, ob this object, the operator norm converges to the operator norm of the, point, the same polynomial at on the family, the family of three semicircular elements. OK, let me uh, introduce the main step to establish this kind of uh, theory. The first one is the well-known weak formula, which happens twice in the lecture, one in the morning lecture and one in the afternoon lecture. Uh, th this formula actually handles the product of the Gaussian elements. So the expectation of the product of Gaussian can be, can be expressed as the sum of uh, pi in the which is a pair uh, partition times the product of uh, the product of the expectation of the two of the Gaussian elements. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me go back. So, uh, so usually when we use the moment method, we need a weak formula to deduce the uh, the kind of weak convergence. That's the convergence of the tra normalized trace. Uh, the next. The next one is that uh, is from the weak convergence to strong convergence. So once we establish the weak convergence, what immediately is that uh, 
the limit inf of the operator norm of p of b n is larger or equals to the operator norm of uh, p of b, where uh, b n is the sequence of the a sequence which converts weakly to b. And the proof is uh, rather simple, and it is based on the relationship between the trace and the operator norm, uh, the trace and the norm. So here is a, a simple proof. So suppose for we have a r which is an even positive integer, then the limit inf of the norm of p b n uh, is that is larger or equals to the limit of the trace of the p b n to the power r, and then set the power one over r. And if r is an even positive integer, then p to the power r is again a polynomial. So we can use the weak, uh, weak, uh, weak convergency to deduce that this limit is actually the tau of pb to the power r, and then uh, the absolute value, and then to the power 1 over r. And the last step is to set r tends to infinity, since the left-hand side does not involve, uh, involve the parameter r. So we, when we set the uh, r tends to infinity, the left-hand side remains the same. While the right hand side here, this object is actually converged to the norm of PB. So for this, uh, so actually from weak convergency to strong convergency, what really uh, difficult is to establish the upper bound. That's the limit slope of the norm of PBN is smaller or equals to the norm of PB. And in our project, actually, uh, we. We, we, we established this, uh, this kind of things uh, using the results by uh, the paper by Ray Handles. And the next, uh, the next uh, useful tool to, for this uh, theory is the so-called linear, linearization trick, which is uh, due to the Hargrove and Troberson in the year two, 2005. Uh, uh, the, this lemma says that suppose we have two units total uh, C star algebras, A and B. And we, we suppose we have a family of elements x1 to xr in A and y1 to yr in B. They are all self-adjoint operators. And suppose that uh, uh, suppose that for every m and every uh, self-adjoint matrix A0, A1 to AR, uh, we have the, this relationship of the spectrum. That's the spectrum of A0 tensor with uh, identity plus the summation k from 1 to m ai tensor with y, yi is included in the spectrum of the same thing where we replace the y by x. And if this uh, relationship holds, then uh, for every non commutative polynomial p, the norm of p of y1 to yi is, is upper bounded by the norm of p of x1 to xr. So in some sense, uh, this condition is some, in some sense uh, linear. Well, here we have a polynomial. So, so the relationship between these two are, are the following. So actually, this coefficient ai may depend on p. So this would be uh, this lemma is usually helps to establish the the upper bound here, this upper bound. Then we try to uh, establish the spectrum of the family b n, and the spectrum of the family b with uh, tensor by tensoring a family of uh, matrix which is deterministic and with a uh, finite dimension. Okay, uh, here are some uh, open problems which uh, I, are unable, hand, unable, unable to be handled in our paper, but we plan to handle in the future. That's, uh, the first one is about the assumption where we require the ji to, the size of ji to be larger than m over two. And the nature question is uh, what happens if alpha equals to zero. That's the size of ji is exactly m over two. And the other one is, uh, is about the GUE matrix. So what happens if uh, we set all the ji to be the same and all the matrices are the same? That's we don't have any uh, independence among the GUEs. And maybe you, you may find more, uh, more uh, interesting questions related to this uh, topic. And lastly, I would like to present some uh, reference. The first one is the reference for the strong uh, convergency and also the linearization trick due to the hard group and Choberson. And the second one is the, it is the paper by Wehandos and his co-authors about the uh, major concentration uh, inequalities. Well, the last reference here is the one which uh, solved the uh, 
which solve the uh, commutative case that's xn tensor with identity of dimension n. And actually, in their results, uh, this their results actually has a connection with the so-called Peterson con uh, Tom conjecture in operator algebra. Okay, uh, I, I think uh, it is time to stop here. And and if you have questions, feel free to raise your question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, our result, I, I think no, since, uh, since we need to use the, the results by, uh, by, by this paper and this paper, the estimate is not enough to establish the peterson tom conjecture. So I think we cannot deduce the peterson tom conjecture. Yes. So, so this actually helps to prove a uh, strong convergence. And what's your question? My question is that if it conversely is a strong convergence, and it can can take the spectral. Uh. If we have the strong convergency, uh, I think the reverse is. Uh, I think it, the reverse is is not true if you you still have a statement like uh, AI to be arbitrary. I think in this case it is not true since we can we ha we can choose AI to be arbitrary. And actually, when when the when they prove this. Uh, this kind of uh, results, they need to. They what they what they need is a special choose for the AIs. They the, the choice of AIs actually quite depends on the polynomial. Sorry. So choose what? You use the traces, yes? Yes, the trace. Okay. If you instead of traces, you take uh, the general states, the sequence of uh, states phi n. Space phi n? If you work, you use the trace, yes? Yeah. Okay. If we, we take the general state, not trace. The general states, right. Uh, You, you mean you mean for, for the general trace, right? Uh, actually, uh, here I deal with matrices, so I, so I, I mainly use the trace of the matrix. Um, so for other states, uh, because in some regards you could use the, the assumption that uh, since there are other possibilities. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not sure what will happen if you choose a tr replace the trace by other states. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.